Welcome, my name is Keith Parsons. In today's little video, we're going to talk about 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. What's going on? This is the spectrum that's been around for a couple of decades now. For a long time, it was called the garbage band. And I, I don't know if we want to consider it the garbage band today, but it's been around a long time and done a lot of things. Today in this little video, we're going to talk about what's going on and what are some of the wireless networking protocols we're using in this band. Let's just look and think through wavelength, size, and frequencies we have available to us. You can see in the formula up at the top, under wavelength, wavelength is just the speed of light divided by the frequency. Well, we know the frequency is 2.4 gigahertz. It's actually a very tightly defined 2.412 is the center frequency of channel one. But what does it look like in size? If we want to see the size, we can look and see that 2.4 gigahertz is about 12.5 centimeters. About, it depends on whether you're on the left side or the right side of the form. Or if you want to think of it in inches, about 4.9 inches. So we have a little ruler there you can look at. But if we're going to compare 2.4 to 5 gigahertz and now what's available in 6 gigahertz, you can see 2.4 gigahertz only has about 80 megahertz of bandwidth. Very small. And we only have like three channels we can choose from then. So as we went from 2.4 to 5, we got a lot more space. And then moving to 6 is even more. Now at the bottom of the page, you can see there's 80 megahertz of channel. And there's a formula, two point, sorry, 2407 times 5 plus the channel number is going to end up getting you what you're looking for if that's the specific frequency you're looking at. And the wavelengths go from about 2.5 centimeters all the way up to down, because we're going up, means the size going down, down to about 12 centimeters. So let's look at, at these. I've broken them down through a couple of different ways that we can zoom in and see these. In 807B, we use 22 megahertz wide channels. When we move to 8011G and AC and AX, sorry, there's no AC in 2.4 gig, we use only a 20 megahertz wide channel for OFDM. Now, if we look at those, there's channel one, and a guard band, channel six, and a guard band. And in between every channel is a guard band. The job of the guard band is to make sure that people on one channel aren't listening to people on the other channel. Now, when they first released these, the IEEE didn't know where in the world this was going to be released. So they said, we want to have 22 megahertz guard channel, 3 megahertz guard band. And as long as you do that, you can use anything you want. And so different countries came up with different things. In the US, we happen to go through 1 through 11. But other countries use different channels. It doesn't matter what country you live in, it still works out that we only have three channels that are not overlapping. Yes, you can use those other channels. The problem is that causes something called adjacent channel interference, which is far worse for a Wi-Fi than co-channel interference or co-channel contention when you're on the same one. Now, if you're in some places in the world where you have channels 1 through 13, it's possible to run a four-channel plan. It works. I've used it. The problem is if there's anyone on channel 6, you, you're getting adjacent channel on both sides of channel 6, and you get a lot more harm. So if you can get away with only using those four, great. Uh, the problem is I haven't been in very many places where they have no neighbors who might be on something else. What we also have here is Zigbee, and Zigbee uses a different uh, channel plan that uses them differently. They're further spaced apart. And on the graphic, you can see they have a different center frequency. And then BLE and Bluetooth, if you look at the bottom, have a whole bunch of little teeny channels. And they're doing a frequency hopping, where they're doing jump, 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 hopping back and forth between those. All the channels are available. In the BLE, there's a couple of them that are kind of poking up a little bit. And you might see these in a spectrum analysis if you ever use a spec -an and 2.4 gig, these are the channels that are, um, I don't want to use the word beacon because beacon actually means something else in BLE, but, but they're transmitting a lot to give a, a local point where devices can hone in on and say that I know exactly where I am and then be comparative. So you should see, and you will see, where BLE is prevalent, these little spikies that are coming up in your channels. So 2.4 gig, 80 megahertz for the channel, three channels for Wi-Fi, more for Zigbee and BLE has a whole bunch of them depending on whether you're doing direct spread spectrum 
frequency spread spectrum. Again, these are useful. We're going to be using them, but they're actually pretty crowded right now. And as long as we're talking quiet, we may be able to get them to work.